Starting recording. Recording started. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's attempt then to get this unit test up and running. So I believe we have to add a new project. So it's going to be. Uh, well, we want it part of the solution. So I think we right click there and then we select. Uh, if I've got testing installed, we're about to find out. <laughs> Test. Um, I believe we definitely needs to be C sharp. I will try. It says unit test in it, so we'll go for this one. We'll we'll attempt to set this one up. Um, App. Let's go for that project name. Yes, I don't think .NET framework matters. It shouldn't matter for this. We should be OK. Yep, so it's out of the in console app test. OK, so we've got a unit one. Let's say I suppose we could have a, um, a, a dedicated test class for each app if we wanted to. That might make sense. I could call this app one test or something. Uh, if I call it app one test, um, I might get in trouble. Let's rename that. Hopefully that will take care of itself. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> we'll find out. But anyway, we've got this template now, and I think we do need to use that using keyword. So we need to make sure because it's in a different project, in a different directory. We need to use the console app project, console app um, project. Um, unless it's a bit better than that. Ah, I think it's references. There's something about the references actually we need to point it to, I think. Um, <clears throat> project reference, add project reference. That was the one I was looking for. Add project reference. Add project reference. Console that projects, that's it. So that maybe now I can say using that's it. Console that projects. So now we should be able to create something of distance converter. There we go. Yes. So we can set up our dedicated and Visual Studio 2022 is very intelligent. It will tell you uh, what you need. So basically, going to create a new object um, of the distance converter so I can start testing it. Because remember, they're supposed to be set up to be automated. So we. Um, only have to run the test one. Well, only write the test once and then we can run it as many times as we need. So this is where we could create dedicated tests. Um, for example, I might want to do test uh, feet to miles. And I suppose if I wanted to generalize this or make this reusable, we could have a single. Well, this could be this could be higher up, I suppose, couldn't it? New ones every time. And then in here, distance converter. Now, this is where we would set it up to run on its own. So, um, <clears throat> what we need to do is we need to allow our private properties to be assigned values because now we define them so that it can run. Um, so we're not going to get them from the keyboard, otherwise that's basically manual testing, isn't it? Because we want to automate it, we provide the values for the inputs, and then it does its conversion. So actually run might not be the right uh, method to call. That's probably the manual one. So let's go back to distance converter. And we'll have to do it in stages, actually. 
Uh, I think we'll we'll make these public so they can be accessed outside of this class because I think they're initially declared to be private. So public. And rather than calling input and type it in from the keyboard, I think we'll probably just assign that um, the from unit is this, the to unit is this, et cetera, et cetera. And then we probably have to call uh, and the input uh, the from distance is that as well, so we probably define that. Um, and there's a, a particular way that we have to set up these properties, actually. We're going to make them public. And I saw it earlier. So I'm thinking, first of all, it probably will mirror a lot of the run. So actually, I'm going to copy the contents of run into the unit test so rather than distance converted dot run uh, we don't need to see the outputs uh, in fact we can get rid of output heading and probably output right at the end because we're not so interested in the what's displayed on the screen we're actually just measuring the the, the values of the of the variables and testing to see whether they are as we expect them to be so I'm going to call that and again input. Not so interested in inputs. Rather than getting it from the keyboard, I think we're just going to define it. We'll say that will be, what might be that'll be the distance unit dot. And here's where we choose. We actually define what we want to test. So if I want to go from miles to feet, um, <clears throat> And that needs to be distance converted, doesn't it? Distance converted. Unit, because it resides within there. We made it public, so we can access it now. Um, we're going to define that. And also distance converter as well. Distance converter dot B. Um, let's go to say miles feet. So we'll go feet there. We've defined from unit and to unit. Uh, we also need to define from distance. So rather than getting it from the keyboard with input from distance, we'll just say distance can convert to dot from distance. Mm, did I call it that? Um, let's have a look here. Where is it? Distance converter. Oh, forgot to make it public. Haha, <laughs> that'll be why. So it needs to be public so I can refer to it. So slightly different design to your kind of purest OO approach because we want to get direct access to these um, attributes. Rather than through methods, we're going to manually give them the, the variables, but the values. So from distance, uh, not distance unit feeds, we'll just give it a, a, um, a numerical value. Let's say we want to go from 100 miles to feet. And I think, well, we can call calculate because that uh, should just assign the value to two distance. Distance converter dot calculates. You say dot convert. And that should assign it to the two distance. It doesn't actually do anything else with it. It doesn't put it out to screen, doesn't rely on a user input. So that should give us the value we're looking for. Good. So then um, here comes, well, really, it's just the way how do we work? How do we prove whether it's given us what we want? How do we test whether it's worked correctly? Well, uh, we can use what's known as an assertion. And um, it's built in a certain way in C sharp. It's different in other languages, um, C++ and, and Java. Um, but we've got options. We can refer to the assert methods. It's a static uh, series of static methods because that we're referring to it through the uh, class name rather than having an object of it. So capital A assert. And um, then we could provide the uh, result that we are looking for, what we expect. So we expect to see a value. Now, what's that going to be? Uh, 100 miles times feet. Is that going to be 52,800? Um, and then we want to compare that with distance 
converter dot to distance. I'm actually just going to double check that <laughs> before we run it. Check that that is to. Uh, what was that? Expected distance, yes. Yes, I think so. Now get the positive case. So I think really all that's left to do is just run it. So in IDE, we can make use of the test harness rather than run the application and get a command line console app that actually executes. We can use the inbuilt test harness. So test in Visual Studio, run all tests. Brings up this uh, test explorer. And it should have coded it correctly. It's probably a little bit of work to run it first time, but once it does, uh, it's thinking about it. It's building the new projects. Yes, I think it has run the test. If you scroll all the way down, you've, yeah, you see all those little ticks. 71 milliseconds. It didn't take very long at all. It didn't take very long at all, did it? Uh, so that's, that's useful. Um, and then that's a test. I can, I, if I make changes to my code, I can come back and just rerun the test just to make sure that it performs as it should do. It will rerun it. Ah, oh, there you go. Done it in nine milliseconds now. Even quicker. It's indexed now. So <laughs> it's super quick. So I could literally line up all these separate tests to run. I want to check boundary values. I want to check my against minus values. I want to check uh, the maximum limit. Um, I want to check, you know, wrong characters being typed in. I can have those all ready to go and literally just apply them every single time I make a change or add a class or um, modify a method. OK, it saves me having to run it manually every time. So that's the process in a nutshell of uh, how to do that. Uh, you can literally just set up all your other methods. OK, so I hope that's going to be a useful uh, little uh, example there to follow. Uh, if you get stuck, just check back with the videos and uh, look at the steps. I think the key points really are adding the uh, new projects. Remember to go for a um, MS test, Microsoft test, make sure it's got unit test in there, and then adding that project reference. You want to right click on that, uh, add the project reference. It should come up there, console that project. And because um, they're two separate projects, technically, you've got a console app project and a console test. Console app test, there you go, just there. And uh, then once you've done that, you can uh, remember to have the using statement in there. That's the equivalent of Java's import. So you want to refer to this file directory. Your distance converter and distance unit classes are in there, that folder. So you want to just point it towards that, refer to that. Then you set up your object. Uh, make your attributes public and then you can directly give them values and check to see whether the calculation gives you the expected value. So uh, there you go, in a nutshell. All right, I'll stop recording now. Mm -hmm.